hey guys welcome back to the princess tiffany channel we are back so it's new year new me i have a video that's going up before this one i know i haven't i just haven't been on this channel i haven't really been online as much as i wanted to but i'm back so finally the new year is kicking off for me at least it's kicking off for me on youtube the new year is kicking off officially happy belated new year so this is going to be the second post from me to kick off 2023 oh my god there's so much that i agree with with this article maureen callahan has pretty much said that she feels as though prince harry is as thick as a plank intransient as a toddler and a falsehood followed contradiction followed hypocrisy a nation screamed at harry's white gloved tv interviewers when will you call him out so this is the title of a daily mail article and to be quite honest with you i think we was all quite surprised last night to discover that harry essentially took back the claims of racism which is like wow because they was always made up from the very beginning now those who have been watching this train wreck for however many months now years should i say it's been two or three years have seen that it's always been fake they was just prepared to say whatever they had to say to get out of their royal duties in order to make money now they thought they was going to go to america the hate and the resentment for them would die down people would lose interest and they could relaunch themselves as this you know fabulous perfect humanitarian idealistic couple without the ties and constraints of the royal family megan pushed on she wrote that terrible book the bench which I, I don't know i mean a lot of people commended it for its artworks didn't do as well as she had hoped their new relaunch rebranding of themselves has been a train wreck everything that they've done has only garnered more resentment and more hate i think that they've realized now oh us calling the royals racist making up this whole racist narrative against prince harry's dad and other senior members of royal firm it hasn't worked it's gotten them nothing they're not getting likability megan and harry have all the money in the world but what they don't have is likability and if you don't have likability it's hard to maintain wealth it's hard to build even more wealth it's hard to set up your children they live a lifestyle that essentially means that they can spend quite a lot of money within one generation within their lifetimes they need likability so that they can set up their children so that they can have longevity and have a solid financial future and forecast which of course is everything that most people in their right minds strive for they don't have this so this is what this battle is really about let me get into her article quickly because this is really where the video was planned to go so she starts off with prince harry's two softball interviews sunday night one with itv's tom brady and the other with anderson cooper of the toothless 60 minutes have made it clear harry is both delusional and appears cynically dishonest shame on both journalists for not calling out harry on his many hypocrisies watch as tom brady sits incredulous yet unchallenging through this jaw-dropping exchange brady in the oprah interview you accuse members of your family of racism harry no we didn't the british press did that brady hmm right excuse me right harry did megan ever mention they were racist let's roll the tape oprah interview oprah they were concerned that if your unborn son archie were too brown that would be a problem are you saying that megan if that's the assumption you're making, I think that feels like a pretty safe one, which was really hard to understand, right? Well, maybe she didn't outright say, but that was the heavy implication, was it not? These two are exhausting. Even Oprah looked shocked. That interview generated one major headline, you know, the one that went all over the world, that the royal family was racist, 
It's literally Brady's job description to challenge Harry here. It was incumbent on Brady to speak for all of us who watched that interview to say the truth. Not Harry's truth, not Meghan's truth, but the truth. Brady did not. He followed Harry to traffic in fake news to move the goalposts to say that, if anything, his family might have been guilty of unconscious bias to move on without the obvious follow-up questions. If Harry and Meghan don't believe the royal family is racist, why didn't they correct the record at any time over the past two years? Why not clear up that odious falsehood in their Netflix docuseries or Meghan's podcast or in this pathetic memoir, Harry's Vlogging? Why did Harry and Meghan allow the woke media to fight what he now says is a non-existent battle? And why did they fly to New York City to accept a humanitarian award for standing up to structural racism within the British royal family? We cannot believe a word Harry says. Meghan and I love Susan Hussey, Harry said. We think she's great. And I also know that what she meant, she never meant any harm at all. You know, for someone who bangs on about wishing that the people who knew and loved him best would stand up for him, Harry's lack of self-awareness is beyond belief. Imagine if Harry and Meghan had raised their hands while Hussey was in the thick of it. The British media, Harry Lowe so much accusing Hussey of being an old white racist and said, hey, wait a minute, that's not the woman we know. But that wouldn't serve Harry and Meghan's agenda, would it? God, he is infuriating. You can see why his father and brother, as he told Anderson Cooper, haven't talked to him in ages. There is just no getting through. Harry is as thick as a plank, intransient as a toddler, not to mention self-pity and self-righteous and unable to stick to his own story. On Good Morning America Monday morning, Michael Strattahan asked Harry a very straightforward question. Did the late Queen ever express anger towards Harry? Harry's answer was, for what? He's either just that stupid or just that defiant, but he can't be both. To Strahan's other obvious question, you left the royal family, so why not just leave all these grievances behind? Harry lobbed another head scratcher. I can't ever get out, he said. I'm sorry, was that not the entire point of Megxit? What is this, the Godfather? And this is the crazy thing, because I believe that during the Tom Brady interview, it was one of the two, or it was the 60-minute interview, Harry's asked by the interviewer, why don't you just give up the titles? You hate the institution, you hate what it represents, you hate its colonial past and the relationship it has with some of the Commonwealth countries. Give up the titles. And he says, oh, but what difference would that make? It's kind of like, um, okay, but you're using these titles for money, right? You're signing off letters, right, in America, yet you're trashing the royal firm, everything that's given you these titles, which you know are of value, be it your birthright or not. And you know that by using these titles, anything you say gives you more validation and credibility to keep on making the institution look really bad. You hate the institution, give up the titles. And it would make a world of difference if he gave up the titles and Meghan gave up the titles. It would make a world of difference to me if he rescinded his Duke of Sussex title, because at least I would now know he really is independent, he really is just Harry, and he really is standing by what he has said. But you can see now, he's such a coward, he can't even own these accusations because it simply hasn't worked, because they were never true. I do not believe that any member of Royal Femme, and I've always said it, would have made any kind of racial implications about Meghan's unborn child. The reality of it is, is Meghan's ankles are as white as a sheep, and she pretty much was disregarding and rejecting her African-American heritage for a very long time. She didn't even understand what it was really to be a black woman, as she personally has said, 